Here's another story for you from being on set. I call it the fight core confrontation. But before getting into this set story, I want you to listen to a short clip from one of my favorite spiritual teachers, Stuart Wilde. It's from his Custodians of Light series, The Lesson on Free Flow. This is where he advocates the avoidance of conflict as it dissipates your energy and wastes your time. If somebody comes up to you and says, I want to argue because I think your philosophy is a bunch of horseradish, you say, it's a beautiful day and I totally agree with you. It is a bunch of horseradish. It's a bunch of absolute rubbish. You're totally right. And then as the guy sits there in confusion, you get on the passing bus, which will arrive just at that moment, (laughs) being totally in flow, and he'll look up and say, ah, but, and you won't be there. If a person challenges you, you step back. The Tao sage steps back. He doesn't fight. He doesn't argue. He doesn't bicker. If somebody says you're a complete idiot, you say you're right and you move away. Because when you have left the earth plane in your inner energy, what do you care if the 20,000 cycle a second subconscious mind starts bickering with you about something? What would you care about? I mean, why would you care? You wouldn't care. You can only have compassion for the mind, for the person, and, and love them but you're not going to sit and argue with them because you are impartial the same way as the Tao is or the universal mind is impartial. If you're impartial, why would you care what they believed? And you're not going to stick around and wait for them to acquire the infinite view, nor are you going to dissipate any of your valuable energy in trying to change them. So if you're in a relationship that, that, that is one of those kind of antagonistic relationships where you say, you know, it is and they say it isn't, you're wasting your time. If you say it is and they say it isn't, you agree with them. You say, yes, it isn't. And then you hear the sound of the door shutting. And it's you leaving, you know. And you can learn more about Stuart Wilde on this website. So to recap, when someone comes up to you and wants to argue with you, according to Wilde, part one is to agree with them. And part two is to walk away. So, okay. So now that we heard Stuart Wilde's take on arguments and confrontations, let's see how it plays out in this set story. Again, I call it the fight core confrontation. So my advice to you is that if you are fight core, don't announce it when you're on set, especially if you're on a SAG set. It's just best not to even bring it up. So if you're on a SAG set and someone asks you if you're SAG, say you're SAG. If you're on a non-union set and someone asks you if you're SAG, say you're non-union. Unless you are a principal talent and you were booked at a SAG rate. So in short, if you're FICOR, you can do both. You can do SAG, you can do non-union. But don't announce it to people and here's why. I was on a SAG commercial set for a worldwide brand and the inevitable happened. A talent came up to me, a man, and asked me if I was SAG. I told him I was FICOR. He said, what's that? Not wanting to get too deep into it, I said, basically it's where you can do both union and non-union jobs. Easy enough, right? A half a day later on that same set, Another talent, a woman who lives here in the Midwest, let's call her Liz. Liz walked up to me after she had been taking, after she had been talking to the first guy. She began telling me that she was SAG and she liked being SAG, but in her view, there wasn't enough work here. So then she asked if I was SAG. I said, no, I'm FICOR. Then she half jokingly said, oh, you're FICOR? Don't talk to me anymore. Please don't talk to me. So I started walking the set. We're going to have a discussion about this, she said. I said, no, you know, I'm not really interested in having a discussion with you about this. And I didn't. I kept walking because you cannot win an argument with someone who already has an agenda or wants to rent. What's the point? So she called out after me after I was walking away and she said, oh, yes, we are. We're going to have a discussion because you guys are ruining the union. 
But by that time, we were, you know, like I said, we were being called to set. And um, once we got to set, everything was cool. When we were on set, I heard her tell another talent that she worked for a Fortune 500 company here in the Midwest. So anyway, later, she came up to me and asked me if I had booked a job that she and I were in friendly competition for. I told her I had, and she congratulated me. But after we were wrapped, she came up to me again when all the talent was standing around trying to get it signed out and trying to get out of there and began her rent. You people are ruining the union, she said again. I said, you know, you're absolutely right. I totally agree with you. I said, trying to, you know, diffuse the conflict and trying to employ Stuart Wilde's um you know, teaching on avoiding conflict, but it didn't work. She kept renting, telling me how she had made so much money at the Super Bowl in 2018 and that the non-union people only made $300. Again, trying to defuse the conflict via Stuart Wiles' instruction, I said, you know what? You're absolutely right. I totally agree with you, but it still didn't work. She proceeded to tell me how a Fortune 500 company had booked her for a gig and then late in the game decided to rebook the entire shoot with non-union people. Is that my fault? Okay, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Let me think about this for a minute. Now, is it really my fault that that Fortune 500 company um, decided to rebook that um, as non-union? Hmm. Let me think about that. No! It's not. Ding, 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 ding. You are correct. She finally ended her rant by saying something like, I needed to look at it from her point of view. The irony from that last statement was almost laughable. Because clearly from her irate rant, she had a completely myopic point of view on the entire situation. She never once tried to look at it from a different perspective. For example, let's say you have Frank Smith. Well, Frank lives in Michigan and he is also SAG. But he hasn't been booked for more than a year because there's not a lot of union work in Michigan. And let's say his landlord vowed to evict him unless he pays $1,000 in back rent. And let's say Frank goes to the online site and sees a non-union job that pays $1,000 on the spot. Okay, should he A, turn down the job because he sag and then show up at Liz's doorstep and ask her for a $1,000 donation so that he can pay his rent and he won't be evicted? Or B, should he call up SAG and tell them that he really needs help getting a SAG job or he's going to be evicted? Or C, should he quell the fear ignore the stigmas, and do some serious research on SAG and FICOR and give it some thoughtful consideration and make a personal decision. Well, let's examine the options here. Option A is not going to work for obvious reasons. Frank does not want to show up at Liz's door because he does not want to endure an entirely different rant from Liz on how he should pull himself up by his bootstraps and he also does not want to be homeless waiting on Liz to write him a check. So we're left with options B and C. Option B is not going to work because SAG does not get its members jobs. It's great it's a great organization, but getting its members SAG jobs is not something that it does. It's not something that it does. So we're left with option C. 
And you have to remember that Liz works for a Fortune 500 company, so she can most likely afford to get one or two gigs a year, whereas maybe Frank works for a retail store and is in college. And so again, it's a personal decision that Frank has to make based on his circumstances and based on a lot of different factors. Maybe sleeping on a park bench in the middle of winter next to Lake Superior will work for him. I don't know. But again, it's a personal decision. Now back to Stuart Wiles' teaching on conflict avoidance. What I learned from Liz's rant is that I did not follow Stuart Wiles' instructions correctly. His instructional teaching was part one, say you're absolutely right, I totally agree with you. But part two was to walk away. While I did employ Stuart Wiles' um while I did employ Stuart Wiles' um, teaching, I didn't follow through with the second part. I only did the first part. I could have simply said, you know, you're absolutely right. It's a beautiful day and I totally agree with you. But I didn't follow Stuart Wiles' instructions correctly. I only did part one. I didn't follow through with the second part. And in retrospect, I could have simply said, you know what? You're absolutely right. It's a beautiful day and I totally agree with you. And then I could have said, you know what? But hold that thought because I really have to go to the restroom. And then either wait until she leaves to sign out or come back in and go to the opposite side of the room to signal her that I was done with the conversation. Or... I could have pretended that I was receiving a call on my cell phone. But you know what? I'm kind of glad that I didn't employ part two. Why? Because first of all, I learned how important it is to employ both part one and part two. And also because had I walked away, I would not have had this story to share with you for this class. So in closing, Liz If you're listening, it's a beautiful day. And I just want to thank you for helping me to create the content for this class. So the decision to go five core is not black or white. There's a lot of gray area and it depends on a lot of different factors. And one of the big factors it depends on is how much you have and what you need. So in short, It's a personal decision. I'm not advocating one or the other. All I'm trying to do is to give you some resources so that you can make the right decision for you. And there are many benefits. Uh, I want to reiterate, there are many benefits to being a SAG member. They take care of you on set and make sure that you're well taken care of, uh, uh, among many other benefits. And you can find out about those benefits on SAGAFTRA.org slash membership dash benefits. Or you can just Google SAG um, member benefits. But there are many benefits to being FICOR as well. And the foremost authority that I know of on FICOR is Mr. Ben Hock. And you can connect with him on actingincome.com or just uh, Google him or find him on IMDB and tell him I sent you. And there are other celebrities besides Ben who are FICOR. And you can find out who they are by just Googling celebrities who are FICOR. Thank you for listening. And I really hope that this session uh, has been helpful to you to make the right decision for you on whether you should go SAG or FICOR or stay non-union. Whatever it is, it's a personal decision. And I hope that uh, this lesson has um, aided you in making that decision or will aid you in making that decision. She undoubtedly thought I acted out of fear 
rather than strength and power. But when you guard your power and you guard your energy and you refuse to let negative people pull you down to their level and dissipate your power, wonderful things can happen. Shortly after the incident, I booked a major campaign ad for one of the biggest stars in the world. And shortly after that, I booked a major role in a film by a well-respected director whose previous film was a finalist for Bosnia's official entry at the 2016 Oscars. As for the other actor, we don't know what happened to her, but more importantly, we don't care. Because in the immortal words of Stuart Weil, when you don't care, you're free.